If you're an experienced trader who's been at this game for a while, there's nothing you want more than to be able to grow your account fast. It's frustrating to sit month after month and year after year without being able to have the big profitability breakthrough that could allow for exponential account growth. But what if there was a trick to rapid account growth that didn't have anything to do with changing your trading strategy or your trade setups? Well, I can tell you from my own experience as a struggling trader who then became an eight-figure trader earner and number one at their tier one prop firm, there most definitely is a way to do so. And that's exactly what I'll be sharing with you in this video. So if you're tired of grinding without major change to your account balance, stick around. I'm Lance Brightsign, and today I'm going to be presenting the sizing note card. This is a trick I do to help grow my size, but it's also an advanced topic which we're going to get into. For other advanced trader content, you can follow me on Twitter at the one Lance B for more videos and content. So here's the problem. In trading, size matters. Many traders want to trade bigger, but they don't know how to safely do so. And many traders have tried in the past, but they've done so incorrectly and they've lost money trying. And I know what that's like. You so badly want to grow your trading, but you end up doing so in a way that leaves you in a hole or leaves you in a drawdown and leaves you more frustrated and exasperated than when you begin. Other traders, though, are consistently profitable, but they never make enough to pay the bills. They have the green and the consistency, but they need to scale it. They need to scale it so they can succeed and reach their full potential. For many traders, their career depends on scaling their business bigger. The truth of the matter is, traders must grow to survive. This is not an industry or a job where you can stagnate and remain complacent. I have mentored dozens of traders. So many fail because they don't reach escape velocity. They never bet enough to earn a living and make all that hard work worth it. So many emails I get are from frustrated traders that want to grow and need to grow to make this their career, not just a costly hobby. How can you safely reach your trading goals? Let's dive in further. If you wanna learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. The solution I'm going to propose is just one simple trick. There's many ways to do this, but this is a method that I use to constantly and consistently grow. And consistently I did. I went from a profitable trader to the top 10 in no time. And then my career really, really took off as so my bet sizing skills were able to launch me to first place. The other thing is this technique is going to help you implement exponential bet sizing. This is a video I've already released, which talks about the importance of betting big in your best setups. But first, there is in fact a catch, as there is with all great things. And that is that this is not for beginners. I can't stress that enough. If you're a beginner, you need to be focusing on building out a basic playbook, finding consistency and starting to learn the nuances of your plays. This whole concept is premised on you having the ability to tell an A plus trade from a B trade and from a C trade. Not everyone can do that. It requires a close eye to nuance and a lot of experience. You need to be able to know whether your trade is just okay, whether it's very great or whether this is going to be a month making op in real time. I get that it's hard. So again, stick to the basics, learn, and then come back to this in the future. The other premise is you must be able to focus on size without letting it alter your system and changing your entries or exits. As long as you have the execution skills and you're at a skill set where you're able to then focus consciously on your size without letting it change the expected value of your trade, only then can we now proceed. So this is what I call the sizing note card. And as silly as it is, it's exactly that. I'd have a note card on my desk with different bet sizes. What this would do is it forced me to grade all my trades in real time and it increased my awareness of these setup nuances. 
this consciousness of your size intra-trade is so, so essential. So what I would do is I defined A, B, C, and D trades. And what I would say is an A trade, at least for me, maybe occurs one to two times per month. These are memorable, amazing standout trades that you're gonna look back on at the end of the year. These are the ones that you really wanna go big on and often bet exponentially if you're at that level in your trading. What's a B trade? For me, I defined it as a type of trade where there's dozens of these per month. It might just be the best trade of the day or one of the couple best trades of the day. They're pretty common, they're pretty frequent, uh, but they're still, still pretty great. At the end of the week, you'd likely be reviewing these. A C trade? A C trade to me is just your average everyday trade. Yeah, you've got a little bit of edge, you're gonna piece it together, maybe it's a little scalp, it's nothing to write home about, it's nothing you're gonna remember at the end of the week or the end of the year, but because it has a little positive expected value, you still go for it. D trades, these are the mediocre 50-50 trades you just get sucked into and bored. You probably lose money overall, especially after commissions. So what I did is based on those definitions, I would take a note card and for each category, I'd write how much size I wanted in, in risk terms for that trade. This allowed me to be very, very systematic and intentional with my trading. If I knew in the moment that I was just in a B trade, I would try to push it and get $10,000 worth of risk. But if in that moment I was saying, oh wow, this is really something special, this is gonna be the standout trade of this week and probably even this month, then if that expected value warranted it, then I knew I had to go really, really big. And how did I define that? If liquidity allowed for it, I'd be pushing for exponential increase and up to 100 grand. And so what's so cool about this is that having a method like this allows you to gradually change your betting style. What do I mean by that? So many people on the Twitter world or in the trading community, they believe in equal bet sizing. That would be whether it's an A plus or a B or a C or a D, you bet the same amount every time. For reasons I've discussed in the exponential bet sizing video, I personally don't believe that's the optimal way to do it as long as you can differentiate expected values. Another way to do it might be binary bet sizing. You can say, okay, uh, if it's really good or at least decent, I'm gonna bet one. If it's just mediocre, I'm gonna bet the other. Then next, we look at linear bet sizing where as the trade gets better, in a linear fashion, you're betting more and more. Then finally, what I had talked about in that other video, exponential bet sizing, where you might not even bet anything on the D trades, might bet very, very little on the C trades, but as you get to a B, an A, or an A+, you really, really start to ramp up in a big manner. Another cool thing you can do is essentially look at this as a way of adding skew. You know, if you're someone that's betting equal sizes, then you can say for month one, all I wanna do is bet linearly and start to increase it that way. So if, it, if I think a trade's really good, I'm gonna bet a little bit more than if it's just okay. Then in month two, you can start to ramp that up a little bit more. Then in month three, you can start to add even more skew. And then in month four, you can start to reach exponential levels. So what's so cool about this is this sizing note card is a very, very systematic way to go about doing this. You can graph this stuff, you can visualize it, and you can see how your size can grow over time and over months. It's such an easy way to reference intra-trade and be conscious about this. So some other tips and considerations. The end of the day, it's just a tool to become conscious of your sizing first in real time. And so often it's hard to do, um, but it takes time and with practice, you'll be able to do it. And as you become conscious of, of how much risk you're putting on, you can then start to implement this. I recommend you do it with some of the slowest and easiest trades first. You don't need to do this on some breaking news headline where you're trying to process 50 things at once and it's all going by lightning fast. I highly recommend you try to find trades that are game planable, that are slow moving, and are things where you can really consciously pre-game plan how much risk you want, how good the trade is, and what that equates to in share size. Now remember, I'm teaching you what I believe to be the optimal method. At the end of the day, you need to do what is right for you. Not everybody wants to bet big, not everybody wants to add skew in their trading. So if you might be wondering what percent of your account should you be betting or how much should you risk in your best plays, I can't answer that. There is no set answer. A lot of this depends on your personal comfort level as well as the strategies you have and the variance of those. If you've got a strategy where you're gonna win 99% of the time, that allows you to bet 
much bigger than if this strategy only hits it 10% of the time. Finally, uh, this is one bet sizing method and one trick. There's many other ways to do it. Uh, I, that said, I don't recommend the pay and pray method uh, where you just pay the offer for max size, then uh, you, you start praying to the gods of old and new. I also don't recommend the hit and go get lit method where you hit the bid for max size, then you go get lit at the bar. Uh, those are two methods I don't recommend, but again, there's a lot of different tools and tricks out there. Find uh, what's right for you. So in summary, traders want to grow their business. Many often need to grow their business to survive, but they don't know how to do so gradually and safely. Once you're consistently profitable and able to differentiate between the quality of your plays, you might want to work on sizing. And all the sizing note card does is this provides you one tool to do so in a premeditated manner. You can gradually and safely move towards an optimal bet shape and size. Uh, it's it's going to be a very cool process when you start to experiment with this and you start to build that consciousness. And it's going to facilitate a way for you to ramp up using this tool and this method for the rest of your career. The limit really is endless. So find what's right for you, but always make gradual changes. Before you move on, I just need to mention something. As great as this technique is for growing your trading account, there's little hope to do that if you're not properly assessing the probability of your trades working out. And if you don't know how to know whether something is an A plus setup or a B setup or a C setup. To be able to do that, you need another indispensable skill. This skill is must have. And the good news is that I made an entire video just on that subject. So click the video appearing on your screen to go watch that right away before you move on and miss this crucial information.